All right. So when uh, we deform a body, um, we are applying a force uh, and applying a force over a distance. That means we're doing work, right? Uh, and we associate with work. So we want to talk a little bit now about how strain, uh, that is the deformation of a solid body, uh, involves work and energy. So we're going to start with Hooke's Law, which we associate with springs. Uh, and that gives us a nice linear relationship between force and displacement, right? Uh, this K is the spring coefficient. Delta X is how much we're pressing a spring in or expanding a spring. Uh, and F is the force um, that, that does that, uh, creates that deformation in the spring. Uh, when we talk about stress and strain, we can rewrite Hooke's Law this way, uh, where delta x, the change in shape of the spring, is replaced by strain, the change in the shape of our solid body. Uh, the force is replaced by uh, stress here, uh, and E replaces K. Uh, and E is our modulus of elasticity, which is sometimes called Young's modulus. Uh, and this describes the relationship between stress and strain in the linear region, right? Hooke's law is a linear, linear relationship. Uh, and so this equation only works for us when the relationship between stress and strain is linear. Uh, and so the slope of that line in the linear region, uh, in the elastic area, uh, is going to be uh, the modulus of elasticity. Sometimes we t say that the modulus of elasticity indicates the stiffness of a material. Uh, it tells us how much the material changes shape uh, when we put it under stress. Uh, and here in this plot, you can see a couple of different steels um, uh, plotted out on a stress-strain diagram. They all have the same E, okay? They all have the same stiffness. That is, when we apply 20... <coughs> uh, 1,000 pounds per square inch here, uh, we're going to get a strain that that's, that's that large on all of those. Uh, and that E, the slope of this line, is the same everywhere. They all have different yield points, right? Some of them are going to start to yield a lot earlier than others, uh, but their stiffness is the same. So in deforming a body, uh, stress acts on a material through a distance, which... Uh, should remind us that work is being done. If you remember, work is going to be equal to, to the force vector dotted with the directional vector. In other words, how much of that force is moving or pushing something in a particular, uh, in the same direction as the force that's being applied. And so really we could rewrite that here uh, in terms of stress and strain, right? This is our distance moved, and this is our force applied. Now notice those are both in units per area, uh, but it's pretty easy to move back and forth between this guy here uh, and this guy. Uh, and because work is being done, we know that energy is being stored. That's what work is. It's transferring energy to uh, an object. So a compressed material stores energy in the same way as a spring, uh, and for a linearly elastic material, that is for the material while it's in the proportional region, in this linear region, uh, we see an equation that looks familiar to us, right? So energy is equal to half sigma times strain, right? And that makes sense up here. This sigma changes, so it's not going to be the, the final sigma, right? But it's the sigma at each point along uh the motion uh, times our strain, and so the fact that those two things multiplied uh, equals our energy makes sense. Then we can start using our relationship between stress and strain, that is that sigma is equal to E times epsilon, uh, to get some different forms of this, right? Energy is equal to this, and then finally we get energy is equal to half E epsilon squared, uh, which you should maybe remember uh, looks very similar to the energy of a spring, half kx squared. 
Now, notice too that that tells us something about the stress strain diagram. Um, in this form, uh, we can look at, if we look at this guy here, we can see that, that this blue shaded area under the curve is going to be equal to energy. Uh, it's the energy under the curve of the stress strain diagram, and that's true whether it's linear or not, okay? Because as we move to the right here, if a, a metal changes state and moves, the strain gets bigger and bigger. Uh, we're adding more and more energy, uh, and that energy is being added by a force that is going to be um, defined by whatever the force is on this plot, right? At this point, uh, the force being applied is here. Uh, at this point, the force being applied is here. Uh, and so the area under that curve is going to be equal to the energy stored uh, in our material. Now, two key values we associate with energy can give us an idea of how well an en a material can absorb uh, energy, absorb a large shock. Um, one of those is the modulus of resilience, which is defined by the area under the triangle at the limits of proportionality. So this is sigma at the, the proportional limit. This is strain at the proportional limit. Uh, and it's this blue shaded area. That tells us how much energy can uh, an a material can absorb before it is deformed. And then the modulus of toughness uh, tells us the area under this curve, all the way until fracture, tells us how much energy can be absorbed before that material is going to fracture. Uh, and so those become ways of describing uh, the characteristics of a given metal or a given material. And that's it for today. This